Okay, so the next study we're going to be looking at is, quote, microneedling plus topical dutasteroid solution for androgenetic alopecia, a randomized placebo-controlled study by E. Sanchez Meza et al., 2020. So this study focused on microneedling, and I'm sure many of you know it, but to the people that don't know, microneedling is a minimally invasive procedure that uses sterile microneedles to create small punctures in the skin. This method is known to stimulate hair growth by triggering the release of growth factors. Although it is debated to what extent microneedling alone can lead to hair growth, just know that it's supposedly the healing factors from the micro injuries to the skin that could lead to hair growth. Alongside of microneedling, a topical application of 0.01% dutasteride solution was used. Now, dutasteride is a dual 5-alpha reductase inhibitor, typically used off-label for the treatment of androgenetic alopecia. And it has also demonstrated greater effectiveness and a similar safety profile compared to oral finasteride. So, conducted at a dermatology clinic in northeast Mexico, this 20-week double-blind placebo-controlled trial involved male participants between the ages of 18 to 65. All participants had androgenetic alopecia, defined as a score of 2 or greater on the hamilton Norwood scale, and had not undergone any androgenetic alopecia treatment in the last six months preceding the study. They were randomly assigned to receive either microneedling with a topical dutasteride solution or microneedling with a saline placebo solution. These treatments were administered every four weeks over three sessions. Follow-up visits occurred at 16 and 20 weeks. Before the microneedling, participants received a topical anesthetic and then the treatment area was cleansed with an antiseptic solution. The microneedling was performed using a Dr. Pen model Ultima A6, so it's those dermapens, and it was set to a penetration of 2.5 millimeters. This was followed by the application of either 1 milliliter of the 0.01 topical dutasteride solution or 1 milliliter of saline placebo solution. Patients were advised to avoid washing their hair for at least 12 hours following treatment. The primary goal of the study was to assess the effectiveness of the treatment using a Global Photographic Assessment, GPA for short, for hair growth conducted by three dermatologists who were blinded to the treatment groups. They compared baseline photos with those that were taken at week 16. Secondary outcomes included changes in hair density, hair thickness, and the ratio of vellus to terminal hair. Trichooscopy images were analyzed in a blinded manner. The study included 34 participants with comparable baseline characteristics across the two groups. By week 16, 52.9% of the men in the topical dutasteride solution group showed marked improvement in their global photographic assessment, compared to 17.6% in the microneedling with saline placebo solution group. The majority of patients who experienced marked improvement in the topical dutasteride solution group along with the microneedling, had a Hamilton-Norwood scale between 2 and 4. So the data from this study comparing the microneedling plus saline placebo solution versus microneedling plus dutasteride solution for the treatment of androgenetic alopecia in these 34 male participants presents some important key findings. Firstly, the mean age of the participants was similar between the microneedling plus saline placebo group being 31.1 years old, and the microneedling plus dutasteride solution group being 29.4 years old, and there was no significant difference here. Giving us a p-value of 0.469, the median duration of hair loss was also comparable between the two groups, 6 years for microneedling plus saline placebo solution, and 5 years for microneedling plus dutasteride solution. And there was no significant difference here, with a p-value of 0.29. When it comes to the Hamilton-Norwood scale, the distribution of androgenetic alopecia severity based on the Hamilton-Norwood scale varied across different levels, but showed no significant difference between the two groups. Here, with a p-value of 0.247. Now for the global photographic assessment. A significant difference was observed in the global photographic assessment. In the microneedling plus dutasteride solution group, 52.9% showed marked improvements compared to 17.6% in the microneedling plus saline placebo solution group, 
with a p-value difference of 0.037. In the frontal area where there was a significant increase in hair thickness and hair density per centimeter squared in the microneedling plus tutastroid solution group compared to the microneedling plus saline solution group, we saw that the change in hair thickness was 16 micrometers versus 6 micrometers, and that the change in density was 26.6 hairs per centimeter squared versus 5.5 hairs per centimeter squared. So that shows a big difference between the group that used microneedling plus dutastroid solution versus the group that used only microneedling plus placebo saline solution. Now, the ratio of vellus to terminal hair showed a significant improvement in the microneedling plus dutastroid solution group compared to the microneedling plus saline placebo solution group at 0.38 versus 0.09 for a p-value of 0.005. In the occipital area, similar trends were observed with significant improvement in hair density for the microneedling plus dutastroid solution group. When it comes to adverse effects like erythema and sensitive scalp, they were observed in both groups, but lasted less than 36 hours. So this is typically expected when you're doing something that involves microneedling and also applying anything topical. It can irritate the skin. But here, researchers concluded that the topical dutastroid solution led to a superior overall improvement in hair parameters compared to the microneedling plus saline placebo solution especially in the frontal area of the scalp. And I can speculate on this a bit. There was a paper that I talked about before on my channel. It was a bit of a small scale study, but nevertheless, it examined the concentrations of different types of 5-alpha reductase enzymes along with aromatase existing in the scalp. And if I'm not mistaken, that study found that there is a higher concentration of type 1 5-alpha reductase in the hairline area. So these things kind of match up, and I just wanted to bring that up to people's attention. So again, here we have very, very interesting results. Now, the researchers did admit that they need further studies to compare topical dutastride with other androgenetic alopecia treatments to explore the long-term effects of this therapy. One of the main strengths of this study, in my opinion, was it's designed as a randomized, double-blind, placebo-controlled study. This approach is considered the gold standard in clinical research as it minimizes bias and enhances the reliability of the results. They use both a control group, the microneedling with saline placebo solution, and a treatment group, the microneedling with dutastride solution, and also allowed for a clear comparison of the effects of the dutastride solution. Additionally, the assessment of outcomes was thorough, utilizing global photographic assessment, hair density measurements, and also even quality of life indices, which provided a comprehensive view of the treatment's efficacy. However, the study also had several limitations that should be considered when interpreting the results. First, the sample size was pretty small, with only 34 participants. This limited sample size can affect the generalizability of the findings to a broader population. Moreover, the study focused exclusively on male patients, and therefore, we can't make any sort of direct applicable claims to females with androgenetic alopecia. Sorry, my voice sucks right now. I have a bit of a cold. <laughs> anyway, also the duration of the study lasted only 20 weeks, and this is relatively short, which may not have been sufficient to fully assess the long-term efficacy and safety of the treatment. Long-term effects, particularly regarding the sustainability of hair growth and the potential for adverse effects with prolonged use, can remain unknown if not done properly in the study. So who's to say that these people got a lot of results and maybe one day out of the blue, all of them lost them. Now, I'm not trying to say that's the case. I think there's enough clinical evidence that proves that isn't the case. But if we had more subjects, right? I feel like if this had a subject count of like 200 patients, right? And if this went on for like a year, and if members of the placebo group were put into the control group and vice versa, I think that would definitively have been a more superior study. It would have been fantastic if that were what happened. So if there's any researchers out there listening to this video, definitely do that and you'll get all the clout in your little research world, right? <laughs> anyway, let's move on to the next video or I guess 
the next study. Maybe I'll cut this up into different videos.